Hello, my name is Abigail Sherman. I'm a junior organizational communication major, gender and women's studies minor. Hi, I'm, I'm Father Art Wheeler. I've been a priest for 32 years. I've been at the University of Portland for 30. I have been studying gendered communication for the last year and a half. I've taught history uh, ever since I came to the University of Portland. I think just broad scope, the stigma around mental health is that you don't want to talk about it. Um, it's a private issue, nobody really wants to address it, so it's been pushed under the rug for so long. I think it's finally coming into fruition and into conversation, which I think is great, but um, there's still a decent amount of stigma attached to it. It is gendered in the sense that it is different regarding your gender. Women are generally perceived in society as like overly expressive of their emotions and they should talk about their feelings, so if they're sad, um, or they're experiencing some form of mental illness or mental, you know, health issues, they should just talk about it. And are often deemed this hypermasculinity complex where they shouldn't talk about it and don't talk about your feelings, boys don't cry, can have serious ramifications and um, further like increase the stigma surrounding mental health and why you shouldn't talk about it. I say shouldn't because you should. You feel like something might be wrong with you if you aren't meeting the standard that society deems you need to be at. All across the board, I think, is like society's a main contributor to it and like how it's perpetuated. Um, and I'd like to see the conversations kind of like get a little louder about that. A difficulty in talking about, say in the college context, when students are exhibiting problematic behaviors and you try to guess what the reason for that might be. For example, if a student seems very depressed, the symptoms can be the same, but depression can be caused because a student has a major disappointment. A student can come to the University of Portland to study nursing and can't get past one of the classes and so has to change a major. That's a disappointment and can lead to some depression. But a student can have depression and not be able to identify at all the reason why it can be because of a uh, chemical imbalance in the brain, which is actually unrelated to any kind of societal influence or it's also unrelated to any events in the person's life. You see a student who's exhibiting very problematic behavior, then the student says, my father's in jail. My mother's dying from cancer. My cousin blew his head off with a shotgun. But then other students just say, I don't know why I feel like this. It's important to realize um, that there are, there's, a, there's a lot of complexity to the issue about the uh, gender aspects of this. Men and women just behave differently in, in college. And some of it's because of gender stereotypes. And a very common thing is that women come to college all very ambitious, going for it and that fades a bit. Men come, it's hard to motivate them in the freshman and sophomore year. Then something around sophomore, junior year, they really catch fire and become very ambitious. It's a very common pattern. And I think it has something to do with societal patterns, but it also has something to do with the age of maturation and just a fundamental biology. Do I think they should be equal? Yes. Do I think they are treated as such? No. We live in a very male-dominated society. Look in the history books, like, who are our heroes? George Washington, you know, is there a woman on Mount Rushmore? And today, in particular, we carry out ideals that have been historically and systematically and institutionally ingrained in our brains. And I'm not trying to say that we're brainwashed or anything. We've, you know, learned these stereotypes and learned these things about our gender. Um, men and women are inherently different um, and all genders are different. I think that it's important to celebrate those differences while still acknowledging some that hold more power than others. I think it's important to recognize that and lift each other up if you are in a place of power in society. I heard a saying once, if you like, make a bigger table, don't make a build a fence, build a bigger fence. I think it's hard to recognize the inequalities in our society when you sit on a place of privilege. You have this ability and then this influence in society. You should help others who don't have that and give them a voice. You can't stay blind forever on this kind of issue. And to answer the question in short terms, no, men and women are not deemed equal in society. Should they? Yes. Depends upon what a person means by equality. 
My observation here at the university is that most of our white middle class women are more in common with our white middle class men than they would have with a single mother who's struggling with economic issues. Most of our students wouldn't even begin to be able to comprehend. There's a lot of tension with gender relations in the United States. People who are disabled versus people who are uh, unimpaired, and people who are suffering with mental illness and people who are not. Those differences can sometimes present a chasm. I think many times the, the, the gender issues more easily bridged than some of those. Sometimes they are unable to comprehend how alienated, lonely, and unsupported some of our students feel. I read an article one time about like dieting, particularly this fixation on women's bodies. What they should look like, what you should do with your body. This obsession regarding what they eat, how they eat, when they eat, up until their reproductive health and the media, magazines, tele television, movies, um, portrays this ideal image of self. Like, y'all have these as our idols or our goals. Like, I'm, but, but like Beyonce, it doesn't mean that your body is not great and you know beautiful. But I think that we have these ideals of what the perfect woman or the perfect like female body should look like. That's unrealistic expectation, especially given the political climate um, and the conversations around women's bodies. I think it's been very difficult for many women because they appreciate aspects of their mothers and their grandmothers. They're also rejecting their basic attitudes towards life. My mother focused all of her life, her role as wife and, and mother. She had six children, she lost, and she lost five in addition to that. In the political sense, losing five children, absolutely so appalled and like abortion. Very difficult for someone like my mother to talk with women that I live with now because their starting points are, are just so different. I would also say that are connected with things like body issues. A young woman comes back in the fall as a sophomore and somebody says, boy, you looks like you put on 20 pounds. Those kinds of comments at women by other women. Magazine, I think it was Cosmopolitan. A magazine for women, edited by women. There's something else going on here besides the stereotypes that men would have mm -hmm. upon women. We live in a society where women are seemingly pitted together. We have shows like The Bachelor, uh, where women are literally fighting for one man. We live in a society that definitely um, tells women that you have to like either one-up each other or you have to amount to this one thing, and if you have to step on other women to do that, then why not? I think that we should support other women. We're all living this life together and going through the same stuff. We should be supportive. How do we fix that kind of stuff? You know, how do we change that culture? 